Hello and welcome back to the next installment of the Hero Review for 2018. And we're going to start off with the Archer in the Heavies. We have got six energy hard points, two in each arm, two in the center torso. There's only two critical slots in that CT, so if you're using both energy weapons, they have to be single slaughters, so either small or medium-sized lasers. And we have three missiles, one in each side torso and one in the CT. So unfortunately, we can't actually use all of the hard points on this mech because there's three hard points in the center torso and two slots. That math doesn't work. So you have to choose whether or not you're going to use the energy or the missile and realistically, you're going to use the energy. They fit better in that center torso as it only has two slots and the energy weapons can fit better because they can, you know, they're only one slot so you can use both of them where what missile fits in there? Maybe a Merm 10, maybe a Serm, but realistically, you're going to do the energy. This guy also has ECM in his left torso, which is quite nice, and that allows him to do some sneakiness. You can go with a LRM design, say six lasers of some kind and two, or two LRM 15s or 20s, depending on what engine you take, you can also do a pair of big MRMs in the side torsos and a pair of energy in the center torso with the other, the arms being down armored in order to save tonnage. But yeah, it's a decent mid-range fire support mech. Uh, it's also got some good armor increases with 22 bonus armor in the CT and 15 for the side torsos. So it makes that uh, armor stripped for the arms and move things into the side torso design actually quite strong next up is the black knight 75 ton intersphere battle mech we've got six energy hard points two in the right arm two in the right torso two in the left torso and a missile and a ballistic in the left arm now the downsides of a black knight is that the energy weapons well actually all of the hard points all of the weapons are sort of around the waist height so when you see an opponent you have to still move forward until your entire torso is showing in order to get on target against them it's much better at corner peeking and city fighting than it is for open fields but you can do stuff such as a bunch of laser vomit and a gauss rifle uh, similar things with other types of ballistics. If you want to do a more close range, you can do an AC-20 on this, I believe, as we don't have a lower arm actuator. Yes, we can do an AC-20. You can also do a bunch of lasers and a great big MRM, as we do have that missile hardpoint, but other mechs do that kind of stuff better. Uh, realistically, I feel this thing works best as majorly laser vomit with a backup ballistic. If you go down that route, or just pure laser vomit. It's a pretty decent mech. It's got some armor bonuses across the mech, which makes it a little fairly durable, and it works. Cataphract, Ilya Muromets, is actually one of my favorites. One of the first heroes I ever got. Ah, uh, nostalgia for this thing. It's got some great armor bonuses with 22 in the CT, 15 in each side torso. You get the full survivability tree and this thing can tank for days. It's got the armor of an assault mech at 70 tons, which is quite nice. We've got three ballistics, one in the right arm, one in the right torso, one in the left arm, and three energy, one in the right arm, one in the right torso, one in the left torso. My favorite design on this thing by far is two UAC 10s in one in the right torso, one in the right arm, and three ER medium lasers in the various energy hardpoint locations. Mid-range powerhouse of DACA. You can also do the standard chainsaw design for this, which is triple UAC 5s and a couple lasers to back it up. You can, if you wish, cut the arm armor down and do more of a side torso base design with, say, a pair of PPCs in the high-mounted energy hard points on the side torsos and a backup ballistic to go with it. I I personally really enjoy this design. I think it's very tanky and I have several videos on my channel showcasing its performance. We have a pair of catapults. We have the first, the Jester, six energy hard points and a pair of AMS and that's it. 
The two energy hard points in the CT are crit limited as there is only two like crit slots there. So if you want both those hard points, you're gonna have to use smaller, medium sized lasers. I, this thing is a really good laser vomit. You put in like three large lasers and three ER mediums sort of thing and just laser vomit people. It works quite well. Another design that I've done on this, which is quite fun, is a huge XL engine and six medium pulse lasers and AMS and just be a like pseudo medium in that sense and skirmish around and do that kind of stuff. I really enjoy the Jester. It's got some okay durability. It's not the best. It's only single digit increases. So, mm. but the catapult did shrink a lot during the rescale and the hitboxes are not that bad. Fairly XL safe if you know how to twist. Moving on to the other catapult hero, the Butterbee. We have four energy, two in each, well, two in the center torso, one in each side torso, and then two missile in each arm. Really good design for this is more of a brawl type. We've got, say, four serum sixes in the arms and then four ER smalls. Depends on if you take Artemis or not for the serum sixes, or if you make those sixes, some of them into fours, you can maybe make the lasers into ER mediums or medium pulse, depending on what you want to do with it. Also depends on which engine you take, but you can make a fairly decent brawler out of this. Also, of course, MRM fire support, as you do have the mass missiles, and this can LRM with, say, four LRM-10s and four small lasers in order to uh, give it a little bit of light defense at close range. But overall, yeah, they're both good mechs for the catapults. Dragons. I personally don't find the dragons that effective. That's just my own personal taste. Uh, there was a point when the flame was one of my favorite heroes, but that has long passed considering the power creep of the game over the years. But starting off with the Fang, we have two Ballistic in the right arm. This does have a lower arm actuator, so you cannot take, say, dual UAC 5s or an AC-20. But you can, say, take two AC-5s, two UAC 2s, stuff like that. We have a missile in the center torso, which is limited to two critical slots and three energy, one in the left torso and two in the left arm. You can do sort of like a fire support kind of thing. I believe the champion type design works on this. You can go like a Gauss rifle in the right arm and large lasers, depending on how many you take. I can't remember if it's two or three in the left torso and left arm and do like a fire support kind of design. You could also do a pair of UAC 2s and some lasers, larger, longer range lasers, to be a sort of more DPS long range design rather than a sniper. The missile in the center torso is limiting you to a CIRM 6 or a MRM 10 or something along those lines, so it's really not that effective. But you could also do more of a brawl design, go with, say some pulse lasers and an LB 10 in the right arm. It's okay. It's not the best. It does have some in pretty good structure and armor bonuses with plus 16 armor and plus 10 structure in the CT with even more for some of the arms and such. So it's durable, but the firepower is a little lacking in my sort of my experience. So take that as you wish. It's a very fast mech. You can put a big engine on it and flank things quite nice. And that works. Next up is the Flame, the other dragon hero, uh, as this is actually the first hero, the first chassis to have dual heroes, because these heroes came out a long while ago. We have four energy, two in each arm. We have a ballistic in the left torso and the missile in the center torso. So exact same as the Fang when it comes to the missile in the CT, it's crit limited, you're not really going to use it that much. This time the ballistic is in the left torso, but we have one. So we can do large ballistic. You can do a heavy Gauss on this. You can do an AC-20. Those are quite nice to do. I've done the biggest light engine I can with an AC-20 and like four mediums or four medium pulse and do sort of a energy ballistic brawl using a big engine trying to move around the battlefield. It's got the same sort of armor and structure boosts as the Fang does. So it's fairly durable. So it works pretty well in that brawl design. 
Uh, but you can also do that with a heavy gauss if you wish. And an old build that I used to use on this a long time ago was like four ER large lasers. Two in each arm, big engine, be in the backfield, constantly re uh, reposition, and just snipe and be annoying. Moving on to the Ebon Jaguar, a clan Omni mech. So if you want the Omnis, you can switch around the Omni designs and you can do whatever Ebon Jaguar design you want on this thing. So it doesn't have to be the stock pods. But if I'm remembering correctly, what this brings to the chassis is missile in the arms, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong there. But also this ballistic in the left torso. I know that's unique because that was the big thing is it had ballistic in the right torso before. So with this ballistic in the left torso, these ballistics and well, actually any of the hard points in the left and right torso tend to stick up above the mech, which puts it really nice and high for shooting over stuff. So you can do things such as dual mounted, really high ballistics on this shoot over cover quite nicely and stay pretty much entirely hull down. If you can put your crosshairs on it, you will shoot it, which is very nice to have. Uh, no quirks, but doesn't really need it. If you like Evan Jaguars and want to do 30% C-bills on them, get the hero. Grasshopper, very similar to how the Black Knight works, as it's just energy weapons with an added ballistic, really. And that's what this one is majority of grasshoppers were like energy and missile or pure energy and now this one's like hey look it's ballistic which is nice you can do the energy weapons and a gauss rifle that design works that's pretty much what the uh, stock design is so we can just upgrade the stock design it comes with an xl 280 which is a pretty excellent engine size and double heat sinks which is, saves you a bunch of sea bills you can dump the gauss if you wish and just go into a more pure energy design which works well for grasshoppers and it has fairly decent durability quirks across the mech which make it pretty durable and make it pretty effective next up is the hellbringer the virago virago wherever you pronounce that hellbringer is one of my favorite designs it's so great what this one brings in is we have the energy in the right torso a pair of it there which there was another is it this one or is there's the f variant that has some energy in the right torso i can't remember how many they had but having this with right torso energy was significant when it first came out but less significant now considering we have other mechs that have those omnipods in order to do sort of like the mass energy designs on this where you have the prime left torso which has the three energy in the ecm and the virago right torso or the it's the f right torso in order to get energy over on that right torso design so that way you can strip both arms down and do entirely torso based hellbringers which are very strong right now with heavy lasers also this one i believe is unique with its right arm missile pair there which I've actually done a brawl design on this thing where I took that left torso prime and the head to get all of the energy weapons, ECM, and then right torso and right arm, I put four CIRM-6 and a bunch of small lasers and then just did a missile energy brawl. It works pretty well. It's not the best for the Hellbringer because the, it's pretty squishy for its weight because it has no durability quirks. So it's still better performing in the long range sort of fire support designs. But if you like Hellbringers and you want to make more money running a Hellbringer, which is one of a good mechs, you can pick up this, the, this mech. Jager mech Firebrand. It's a decent, decent hero. The arms are quite high, because of course it's a Jager. The side torso energy, the two in each side torso, are actually very low. They're right down at the waist. They're not that good when you're doing sort of volley shots from uh, some piece of cover. You're Jager bombing it over a hill and you're only showing your top of your mech right up to the cockpit and then firing going back into cover. It's okay though, because you don't really need them. We got two ballistic and two energy. Uh, 
one ballistic and one energy in each arm that's enough really it comes with an xl280 which is a perfect engine for it it comes with double heat sinks so you don't have to spend the money there you can put in designs i've run on this with like a pair of ac5s pair of ppcs and do sort of the 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 snipe and back in the cover sort of thing i've done the dual gauss it's got some decent structure quirks it's got ppc velocity of plus 20 percent energy heat of minus 10 percent which is quite nice and then a general range increase of 10 percent so it's a good fire support it's not the best at brawling or anything if you catch it out in the open it's probably going to die pretty quick but if you can get into a nice position for it you can put out some good damage you do in the Jagger bomb style, which is just showing the very, very top of your mech and getting those arms over cover. The linebacker, the red line, what it brings unique to the chassis as it is an Omni mech is I believe this right torso with the three energy hard points so that you can do mass energy in the torsos if you wish. Downside is that Omni mech, that Omni pod, it doesn't have any quirks attached to it so you we don't see any right torso boosts here in terms of durability but if you like linebackers you can run any of your favorite linebacker designs on this so we can do the mass srms it can do the two ppcs and the side torsos uh, but i would just switch out this side torso from the three energy to a one energy so you get some armor quirks to go along with that single ppc but it's a linebacker. It's fast. It doesn't have as much pod space as other weapon, oh, other mechs of its size. But it's really durable if you build it right. And it's fast as hell. It makes an excellent skirmisher, excellent pusher. I actually have a drop deck, which is basically three linebackers, all with mass serms that are entirely designed just to run into enemy lines and create havoc, and they work quite well doing that. So, linebacker, pretty good mech. Moving on, we have the Mad Dog Hero, whatever this is called, the BA. I forget, but it brings uniqueness to the Mad Dog, which is ballistic hard points, one in each side torso, and then it's got energy, two in each arm, which isn't really that special because the other omni variants of this have other energy weapons in those arms you can always swap out the pods in order to run whatever build you want on this but people don't expect you to have ballistics with a mad dog they expect you to be pretty much all lasers or all missiles which you can do you can run those builds you can get the a side torsos and get your mass serum sixes and stuff like that and you can run those designs but there's just something about having like a pair of uac i don't know pair of uac 10s or whatever on this thing and a bunch of medium lasers and being a mid-range daca design and people going where's that daca coming from well it's not the mad dog that's not right wait it is holy shit sort of thing um yeah it works fairly well uh, mad dogs tend to lose their side torsos like champagne corks they just pop right off but that is the problem of this mech it's not really something you can get around but otherwise pretty good we have the marauder the blub what is it bounty hunter that's what it is three energy in each arm and one in the head of course that one in the head is limited to one slot so it's either a small or medium-sized laser and then a single ballistic in the right torso. This also does have some jump jets, which is nice. We got some good durability on this thing. Yeah, actually sort of mid durability, 12 in the CT, but single digits for the rest of the mech. Some good stuff you can do on this is Goss in the right torso, which it already has. And then say like six or seven medium lasers in a Goss. It's a pretty good sort of mid range uh, damage design you can also do a heavy goss on this if you wish you have to go a standard engine but it's possible single heavy goss and some medium lasers to back it up that works if you wish you could also just dump the um, ballistic all together and i've seen people do things like four ppcs on this two ppcs in each arm and just do two 
two, two, sort of the one, two punch from each arm firing off those PPCs in order not to trigger a heat scale. Yeah, pretty good Marauder. Really uh, hard to kill dead on, but don't give people your side because then your, your side torso is really easy to kill after that. The Night Jeer, the Jade Kite. Excellent mech. A little slow, but it's a Night Jeer. You can be expected for a 75 tonner that was only a 300 rating engine. The specialness that this thing brings, I believe, is this left torso ballistic and this right torso missiles. I believe with the Jade Kite, you can get just an, another missile or another ballistic when you're min-maxing a uh, Nightshare design. But it's an Omnimax, so you can do whatever favorite Nightshare designs are. You can do the dual Goss and a bunch of medium lasers. You can do Goss PPC, although that's not as prevalent these days because of the heat. Uh, heat scale linkage to those weaponry but if you do fire the goss then fire the ppc it works overall yeah it's a great mech it's slow and cumbersome you really need to play it like a fragile assault in that sense because it's not going to have any durability quirks and it's only a heavy in terms of durability but it's slow as an assault uh, use those jump jets to their maximum capacity Get yourself into a location where you can jump snipe, and this thing will perform. The Nova Cat. It is another Omni Mech, 70 tons, so 5 tons lighter than the Niger. Extremely similar in sort of design to the Niger. A little bit shorter, though. This is essentially a energy based Niger. You do have the missile arms here, and you can do a mass missile. Nova Cat. That's possible. And the mech's name is, I believe, the Cobra Cat. But the fact that this doesn't have... What is it? Doesn't have Ferro Armor, right? It just has regular armor, where the Night Jeer has Ferro Fibrous. It means that this has more slots to play with, which means more double heat sinks, and therefore better suited for energy weapons. I absolutely adore running two large pulse one on each side torso and then like was it five or six medium pulse in the arms with other omnipods and this thing melts things because it just is like have a bunch of pulsing blah 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 and the person's like oh god my armor is gone it's a little underrated it's again like the no night gear no durability Poor maneuverability, no stock jump jets, but I believe you can take pods for jump jets on this, although that's eating into your uh, available pod space. But it's a really good alpha strike type mech with a bunch of lasers. I enjoy it. The Orion Protector, Intersphere Battle Mech at 75 tons. Lots of durability on this with a center torso of plus 23 armor, left torso and right torso of 16, arms of 12, and legs of Plus, what is that? 16 again? Nice. Tanky as shit, but a little lacking on firepower unless you build it right. We've got three energy hard points, one in each arm, one in the left torso, not crit limited at all, so you can take three large energy if you wish. Right torso has two ballistic, which you can take any size of ballistic you want, heavy goss, a pair of UF5s, AC20 whatever you want from there, and then two left torso missile, which you can do brawl designs with, say, AC-20 and two serm 6s and some medium pulses and do sort of like a pseudo brawl. There's other Orions that do that a little bit better, but this can function. It also is pretty good at sort of a mid-range fire support type thing with, say, UAC-5s and pulse lasers or large lasers. You can do the same thing with ER large lasers or ER PPCs and Gauss rifles to do a long range support. Also the mid range, if you wish, you can do the lasers and MRMs because you have the two missile hardpoints here. You can do like a pair of MRM 30s in that side torso and a pair of whatever uh, big energy weapons you want in the arms. It, it works pretty well. 
it's a little easy to pick off the individual portions of this mech because the side torso has this great big like flare to it so it's pretty easy to pick that off it is fairly durable but it's not the best orion for certain things and it's, but it's not the worst mech in the entire world the orion 2c this goal if i'm pronouncing that correctly is a clan battle mech. We have four energy hard points, two in the right arm, one in the left arm, one in the left torso, one ballistic in the right torso, and one missile in the left torso. Now just a single missile in its clans, so therefore we can't use ammo rams, which kind of sucks. But it can take a mask, which makes it go super duper fast. And considering it's a clan, we can take XL engines with no worries. It does have armor bonuses, just a moderate ones with single digits for the rest of the mech and plus 12 in the CD. So if you wish, you could do something like an Ultra 20, 4 medium pulse, a huge engine and mask, and just allow yourself to move around the battlefield at like medium speed with the durability of heavy. Kind of nice. Uh, alternatively, you can do things like Gauss rifle and a bunch of heavy lasers and do a more mid-range trade if you wish. Yeah, it's a pretty easy mech. Moving on to the quick draw, the IV-4. This mech was pretty bad before New Tech came out and we got MRMs. As it would just be like, what are you gonna do? Alarms? No, okay. SRMs? Okay, so a pair of SRM6, a pair of medium lasers, and then what? An LB-10 and one the right arm? That's it. The arms are so far apart, and the ballistics are on the outside of the arm. It's just convergence issues for days. But when MRMs came out, this thing got into a new light. Because you can cut the arms off for their armor, and you can just go pair of MRM 30s, one on each side torso, a pair of medium lasers in the center, and just go ham with that. It's got really good durability for its weight. It's only a 60 tonner. It's barely a heavy, and yet it's got like plus 20 armor in the CT. Missile cooldown of minus 20%. Like, God, it's so good in that sense. Put a pair of Merm 30s on this, put a pair of medium lasers in the center torso, put a pretty decent light engine on it, fill it with MRM ammo, which is even better because they just buffed MRM ammo, so you don't need to take as much. You can probably get a slightly faster engine or slightly more heat sinks in order to make it more uh, sustainable in the match. And then push people. Just push them. Kill them. If I have a chance, I'm getting this on my free-to-play. Because it would fit into my drop deck perfectly. Next up is the Rifleman, the Legend Killer. Great mech. We've got moderate durability increases across the mech, but it doesn't really need it because it's more of a fire support. You don't brawl with this thing. It's just not really designed to do it. We do have cooldown general for all weapons minus 10% and also the IS LB10 cooldown minus 10% for a total of minus 20 on our LB10s which is quite nice a very common build on this is say four medium lasers as we have four energy hard points and then two LB10s we only we we do have four ballistics and you can use those uh, the four medium laser and two LB10 build is quite good mid-range DPS for just putting shells down range I really like doing a 4AC2 design on this and standing back and using a macro and just cackling. This is my uh, when I just want to have fun mech sort of thing. I put that design on and I go <laughs> sort of thing as I sit back and just throw AC2s across the map. It is a fairly good rifleman. And if you want a fire support mech and that's not a, uh, not a Jaeger, the rifleman performs fairly similarly. The Roughneck, I can't remember the mech's name, but we have two ballistics, one in each arm, four energy, two in each side torso, and one missile in the center torso. One missile in the CT that's crit limited, yeah, we're just going to ignore it. We got energy and ballistic on this thing. For the energy, you can do, say, like four medium lasers, a pair of UAC 5s, one in each arm. Uh, there's a little bit of convergence issues because the arms are a little far apart. You can, say, merge those ballistics into one arm and just do a single uh, UAC-10 with medium pulse or something along those lines. 
Unfortunately, you can't do 20s on the arms because they do have lower arm actuators and that's just not enough crit slots. But that works. You can also just do a pure energy design on this if you wish because you have these very high mounted energy uh, platform here. You can just do just PPCs or large energy weapons up there, strip the arms down to get a bunch of weight back, put a bunch of heat sinks on it and just peek over ridge lines and shoot from there. That works too. Roughnecks, known for their durability, massed structure and armor quirks across the mech. Get your full survival tree on this thing and you just... It's super hard to die in this. Summoner! Excellent mech. Very good at pop tarting. You have the two PPC design, one on each side torso and do that jumping. Of course, it's an omni mech, so therefore we can change around our hard points. If you have any summoner designs you enjoy, you can do them on the hero with 30% additional Z bells. And what is the name? It's the, thing is the, it's the Pride. That's the name of this mech, the Pride. Something like that. But yeah, uh, really nothing special about the hard points on this that you want to run. You're going to swap them out for other stuff. There's the mass SRM version that you can just do splat brawl with your good mobility of jump jets and top speed. Or there is the just two PPC, one on each side torso to do that. That works too. It's a summoner. It's very effective. The Thanatos, the hero. We have five missile in the right arm, five energy, one in each side torso, one in the center, and two in the left arm, and uh, no ballistic. We do have ECM in the left torso. ECM helps keep this thick boy in cover as, my god, those legs are thick and those side torsos are thick. A little easy to take them off. I wish this thing had more durability on its side torsos and such, but... Oh well. It comes with a big XL engine if you really need a 375. It's a cheap way to get one. Well, not really that cheap because it's a hero, but I mean, if you're going to buy the hero anyway, yay, a free XL 375. It's got double heat sinks. The five missile in one arm is ridiculous. You can do stuff like five CERN 4s. At some point, you start running out of crit slots. Because if you start putting, like, I'm going to put five CERN 6 in it, it just doesn't fit because it's all in one arm. The stock design has a bunch of rocket launchers, which isn't actually that terrible. You're probably gonna overheat yourself firing all those rocket launchers, but then you just have a bunch of like, say medium pulse to back it up that you can use across the rest of the mech. You could also just do like a single Merm 40 or a pair of Merm 30s or something like that in the right arm and just do a MRM plus medium laser design and call it good, and that works too. But I haven't really put that many hours into my Thanatos hero, so I can't say for certain what's the best build on this, but there are some options. The Thunderbolt, the top dog. Nine energy hard points, four in each side torso, and one in the right arm. This guy with moderate to good level of durability increase with increases in structure and plus 10 percent energy range this guy's pretty good actually pretty compact design just do mass medium pulse or something along those lines uh, laser vomit of many types works on this guy as well these two first mounts in the right torso are quite high on the side torso therefore you can pick people off with it and is the cockpit right in line with it you don't have to go over the hill very much you just peek up put a pair of ppc or something up there you can peek over a hill throw the ppc down range and then come back down and then have some other medium lasers or er smalls or something like that to back it up beyond your ppcs it works well it's a good energy boating ground pounding is heavy Timberwolf, Clan Omnimech at 75 tons. What this guy does that it brings to the Omni chassis for the Timberwolf is right torso energy weapon with no jump jets. The only other one that had right torso energy was the S variant, which has the 
jump jets in the side, if I'm not mistaken. So therefore, you would have to take the weight of the jump jets. Which most of the time is okay, because you want to have a little bit of mobility. But if you want to just do a ground pounder, you can get this guy, do that right torso. Take that right torso and say, put it on a timber C that has the center torso energy. And you can have a little bit better, a little bit, um, a little bit optimized timber wolf energy vault. Otherwise, it's a timber wolf. They're a little out of favor as of late, as their mobility was severely capped in the engine desync. They're still okay. They're not the best, but they're not bad by any sh by any long shot. So it functions. You just gotta know how to play them right. Next up is the Warhammer, and it's the last of the heavies. We've got the Black Widow. Daka King! I love this guy. We got four ballistic, two in each side torso, four energy, one in each arm, one in each side torso, and a missile, one in the right torso. It's a single missile. You can, because it's in the right torso, do things like Merm 40 and some energy weapons. That does work on this guy, but really, this guy is a Daka design. We have some moderate to low uh, structure increases, but primarily this guy's fire support. You can do things like triple UAC 5s, pair of AC 5s, pair of PPCs, a uh, pair of UAC 10s and some lasers, uh, quad uh, UAC 2s, the old DACA design, which is 2 AC 5, 2 UAC 5. This thing is a fire support monster. Everything is nice and high in the side torsos. You strip down the arms to get a little bit of armor weight out of them so you can get more into your engine and such. It works quite well. I have one on the free to play and I'd highly recommend it. But that is going to be it for the heavies. These are videos are taking way longer than I wanted to, but there's just so much to go over. Next up is the assaults. But that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching and good hunting.